Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about the Lookup Wizard. He's an evil wizard. Evil wizard. Very, very bad. I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't use the Lookup Wizard and what to do if you have used the Lookup Wizard previously and how to fix it. Today's question comes from Cameron in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, one of my Platinum members. Cameron says, I started building my database before I found your tutorials. I hear that a lot. I know that you don't like the lookup wizard, but I have lookup fields in a lot of my tables, and now I need to get rid of them. I can see why you don't like them. One of the lookup tables that I have is for product codes. And instead of making a separate table for that, I used the lookup field that I copied into four different tables. Now, every time I need to change one of those product codes, either add or delete one, I have to do it in four different places. Are there any tips you can give me for how to set this up properly and how to easily take my list of a few hundred product codes and put that into a table properly? Yes, Cameron, let's talk about lookup fields, a lookup wizard, why you shouldn't use them, and I'll show you how to fix what you've got there. All right, so if you're not familiar with what the lookup wizard does, if you're making a table, let's say you're working on your customer table. All right, let's go to design view. And let's say down here you want to have a list of supervisors, okay? And right now you're starting off, you're a small company, you've only got maybe three supervisors, right? So supervisor. Okay, now over here you want to have a list of supervisors for people to pick from. And this is where people go wrong. They pick a lookup wizard here, okay? And, you know, starting off you might not have a table of supervisors, so I'm just going to type in the values that I want. That makes more sense, right? Okay, I'll put the list of supervisors in here. Let's say we got Jim, we got Pat, and we got Bill. Okay, next. And what label would you like? That's fine. You wanna limit it to the list? That's okay, or not. You can let people type new ones in as you go. That's fine. Multiple values is also another sticking point that I have. I don't like multi-valued fields. I got a whole separate video on multi-valued fields. I'll put a link to it down below. Don't use them, all right? And then we'll just hit finish. Okay, so now what do we got here? We got a short text field. It's gonna actually store that name in a text field in the table. But where does it get the list from that you typed in of people, right? Well, come down here, look for this lookup tab. Oh, there we go, okay? Here's my row source, Jim, Pat, Bill. Okay. And now if you save the table and you go into regular table view, right, data sheet view, you come over here, supervisor, and you can pick from that list. All right, and if you make a form out of this, you'll also be able to, you know, it'll put a combo box on the form. The problem is, and this is what Cameron's running into, is that if this list gets bigger, all right, Cameron's using product code, so I can see that getting very long very fast. It's difficult to update it because you have to come into table design to update it as opposed to just having that data in another table, right? And if you copy this information to other tables, let's say you got a customer table, you've got maybe an order table who's a supervisor for the order, right? You copy this same field over to that. Now you got to update it in two or three places. And in Cameron's uh, situation, she got it in four places. It is not considered, amongst database nerds like me, it is not considered a best practice to have lookup fields like this and lists stored directly in tables. This list should be in a separate table of its own, right? You could either use a supervisor table, all right? Or what I prefer is, all right, you got customers and supervisors now. You might also have employees. These are all people, right? It's all the same type of data. So you might wanna put that in a person table and just mark what kind of person it is. Is it a customer? Is it an employee? Is it a supervisor, right? That's another option. But if you're just getting starting out with access, that's fine. You can make a supervisor table and put that list in there. This causes problems, especially down the line. Microsoft added this feature to access relatively recently. I'm not exactly sure when, but it was to allow beginners the ability to put lookup lists inside of tables, all right? Even though it's bad database practice, they figured, okay, it's just for the beginners, it's fine. But as you get more and more in depth with your database, as you learn more and you learn how it should properly be set up, now you've got these lookup lists in there that shouldn't be in there, okay? 
And if you want to upscale your database later on to something like SQL Server, you're going to have to remove them. Uh, lots of problems can be caused by these. Again, they were a Band-Aid for beginners that cause problems later on. It's like, it's like putting training wheels on your bike, right? Once you learn how to ride the bike, now you got to go through the hassle of taking the training wheels off. So what should you do? How should you set this up? Well, the way that you should do this is, again, I mentioned it earlier, create yourself a supervisor table. And that's going to have a supervisor ID with an auto number and a supervisor name. You could do first name, last name as separate fields if you want to. Don't use just name. Remember, name by itself is a reserved word. That'll get you in trouble. Okay, save this as your supervisor T. Right, supervisor table. Now, how do you get your data in here if you already got it in the lookup field in the other table? Well, just come over here, design view, go to your lookup, which is on this field. There it is right there. And if you want to get a list of this without all the quotes and stuff, because if you look at it in there, it's an SQL formatted list, right, with a little semicolons in there. But if you come over here and click that little dot, 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 it'll give it to you like that, one per line. Just copy that stuff to your clipboard, control C. And then come on over to your supervisor T, highlight this column and go paste. There you go. That's a nice quick way to get that list. If you got like Cameron, if you got like 500 products in your table, that, that, that'll get you out of there. Okay. Now that you've got it in a separate table, what you can do is you can uh, go into the customer table here and you can replace that customer, that, that supervisor with a supervisor ID, supervisor ID, all right? That's going to be a number of type long integer. Okay. That's going to be an ID referencing this guy. All right. That's supervisor ID right there. Okay. And now what you do is, right? Now you're going to store that ID in this supervisor ID field. Okay. And if you've got a whole bunch of these text values in here and you want to put them as the IDs in this based on what they are on the table, you can use an update query for that. I got a whole separate video on update queries. I'll put a link to that down below as well. All right, and once you put these in here, right, one, two, three, and so on, then you can go back and get rid of the supervisor name. And then you can create a regular relational combo box so that your users can pick the supervisor from a list, a combo box on the form. All right, that's where that list should be. But this data now is just a number referring to a value in this table. Okay, that's the right way to set that up. I got lots of other videos for you to check out related to this. First up, watch my video on data types. I go over all the different data types and basically tell you what each one of them are. Watch this video on relationships. So you learn how to relate multiple tables together like customers and supervisors. Well, you probably wouldn't have customers and supervisors. I just put supervisor in there as my example. It probably would be employees and supervisors or customers and sales reps or whatever. This video will show you how to make that relational combo box where you can pick from a list in a different table. You can also use value list combo boxes in some places. They have their use. In this particular video, I show you how to do it with a small list of states, but again, that in most cases, that's something that should be stored in a table, all right? I show you how to do it. Now, once in a blue moon, I'll use a value list combo box, but it's almost always a relational combo box. Here's that video I mentioned on multi-valued fields, all right? These are something that you put right in a table and you can pick from multiple options. Again, this is the wrong way to do it. Microsoft added this to access as a crutch for beginners, but it's, it, no, it's bad. It's bad, bad, bad. This video will show you the right way to set it up with a many-to-many -many relationship and something called a junction table. Here's my update queries video. So when you add that ID and you want to copy over all the IDs from the supervisor table, you can use this to do just that. That's an update query. And these are all free videos, by the way. I'm not, I'm not selling anything here. This is all free stuff. Tons of free learning on my website and on my YouTube channel. You can spend hundreds of hours learning for free. I just hope that if you do like my stuff, maybe consider becoming a member, right? Costs a couple bucks a month and it, uh, it, it helps to keep me making these free videos too. Oh, and one more page you should check out is my evil access stuff page. If you want to learn all the other things you shouldn't do in access, I got them all listed on this page. The things that are bad, like spaces in your object names, 
This is the, you don't know how many times people want me to look at their database and they send me screenshots and stuff and it's like spaces everywhere and they can't figure out why they're having problems because they're just spaces. <laughs> Simple things like that too, All right? Watch the reserved words like date and name. Don't use attachments. Don't put, you know, pictures in your tables, that kind of stuff. All right? Look up values are right here. I'm going to link to this in a minute for, to the video I'm making right now that you're watching. But there's all kinds of other stuff on here. I'll put a link to this and all of those other free videos down below. But that's it. That's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, 
and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.